I've got an XRP price prediction for you that along with some big dates could either spell juicy news or big trouble for XRP holders. We also have a new leader in the DeFi space. I'll share that with you. And we also have contagion news. Yep, we have a new alert coming out on the market telling us, hey, this firm, they might be in some deep, deep trouble. Hello, crypto friends, and welcome new viewers. Bitcoin sitting at 16,645, ETH sitting at 1208. XRP highlighted the show today, sitting at 34.1, down 1.27% in the last 24 hours. We're going to get to that XRP price prediction through January 31st, everyone. All right, new leader in DeFi. Lido Dow is the new DeFi leader on January 2nd. Liquid staking platform Lido Dow overtook MakerDAO as the largest DeFi platform by TVL. According to the market tracker DeFi Llama, Lido currently has 5.98 billion in TVL compared to MakerDAO's 5.93. Here's the thing though. The reason Lido is surging has to do with ETH staking. There was always a $40,000 32 ETH staking requirement of which now Lido said, hey, you don't need that much fundage to stake, which means that isn't only just for whales. It's for more retail level trading investors out there. So it's important to see that as they open the market up to more investors, more people are like, yo, we'll do, you know, we'll add to your TVL juicy stuff, everyone. All right. Right, now on to the warning regarding market liquidation. DCG insolvency fears again sparks grayscale liquidation speculation. Here's what we know. Winklevoss. Oh my. Yep, we're not talking about Facebook this time. We're talking about trading platform Gemini. Cameron Winklevoss, the co-founder of American Crypto Exchange and Custody Platform Gemini, has given digital currency group Barry Silbert until January 8th to reach a resolution that will bring back the $900 million that Genesis owes to Gemini Earns customers. Winklevoss stated that Silbert gambled away the funds in kamikaze grayscale native asset value trades. Hmm, taking other people's funds and doing degenerate crypto gambling with it? Where have we heard that story before? FTX with Sam Bankman freed. Anyways, here's the tweet for you that has the actual open letter to Barry Silbert. Barry says, today marks 47 days since Genesis halted withdrawals. I'm writing on behalf of more than 340,000 earn users who are looking for answers. All of this because they are owed more than $900 million in assets from Digital Currency Group. Now, Digital Currency Group is the owner of Grayscale. Here's the problem, everyone, and this is what they're alerting to here. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is in red. Bitcoin native token is in blue. Over the last, uh, let's let's zoom this out just a little bit, just to give you guys some perspective here. Over the last six months, you can see that Bitcoin is only down 13%, where the trust is down 34%, all right? So that money, right, that 900 million that was put in the trust action, gambled badly, degen crypto gambling alert, that has eroded even further. So obviously the 900 million isn't there, and the Gemini Earn users are like, yo, where is our money? And he was given till January 8th. The problem that we see here is when we zoom out even further, this is where the scariness happens, everyone. Over the last year, you could see that Bitcoin, yes, is down 63%, but the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust product is down 76%. So you know that 900 million is gone. And worse off, the reason why DCG doesn't want to give Gemini any of their money, they need the cash themselves. They're probably in a deeper, deeper hole than any of us could ever imagine. Think about it. Who in crypto is doing good right now, right? We've seen FTX's books be bad, Celsius be bad. We know CZ's lying and all that crap. So think about it. Digital Currency Group right now is in deep, deep crap. And that that's why they don't want to give Gemini that $900 million because A, they don't have it, and B, what they do have left, they need to keep themselves solvent. And this discrepancy between the two is what is alarming. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is performing worse than the native token. The problem here is that, remember, these trust products are made for institutional grade investors. They're supposed to be safer than going directly into the native asset. But with that 900 million now sunken into a product that's falling fast, 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 worse than the native asset token, there's some big, big problems. The other big problem we have too is Grayscale's other products are having the same problem as well. Here is Grayscale Stellar Lumens Trust, and you can see, look at how they, this is horrible. 
That is, that is horrible. So in the last year, they haven't been around the last year. They've been around since October. But in the last year, when we go up on the charts, you can see, I mean, they are down quite substantially. In fact, if we compare that to XLM, and let's key that up on the screen right here. When we compare it to XLM, you can see that the same thing is happening here, that the trust is actually performing way worse than the native asset token. Okay, so that's blue. Blue now is XLM down 72% for the year. The trust down 88%. Again, something meant for institutional level traders out there performing worse than the native token. So think about Grayscale thinking, hey, we're gonna make this product out there that's gonna be safer than all these native assets and no one is interested in it. That's why you're seeing DCG have massive, massive liquidity problems. That's why they can't pay Gemini back. That's why Winklevoss wants his 900 plus million dollars. That's why Crypto Hot Potato is bad because there's people waiting on money, who's waiting on money, who's waiting on money, who's waiting on money, and who's gonna be left at the end that's holding holding the bag. So that open letter saying, hey, we've been waiting now 47 days for you to give us our money back, that money is probably gone. The problem is this, everyone, with Gemini halting withdrawals, how long can they last before they completely fold? They're looking for more than $900 million. And let's be honest here, the rest of the products from Gemini are going down, 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 just like the rest of the crypto market. So remember that crypto hot potato that we've been talking about where this company, it was this company, it was this one, and this one, and this one. You can see it right now that Digital Currency Group is owing Gemini $900 million. But now all the people that invested in Gemini aren't getting it because they're not getting it from Digital Currency Group. Crypto hot potato, everyone. Now onto the XRP price prediction segment. I'm not a fan of price prediction stuff, but I thought I'd share this with you and get your take on it. I have the chart of XRP up on the screen right now, and you can see that the big pump that came here came from a lot of FUD from bad YouTubers out there around September when they said, oh, summary judgment's gonna happen. Lies, 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 as Deaton is like, yo, look, we're not gonna settle anytime soon. Soon, we're gonna go the distance. So once the world got back to normal, you can see this crash right here. This crash has to do with FTX. So any gain that was made from the Fudsters out there filling you with hopium was lost with the FTX crash. You can see now further erosion of price, right? Any pump that happens of XRP, it's not sustaining it right now. And I'm a huge fan of XRP, but realistically, what are the market conditions right now telling us that things are gonna get better? They're not. So now on to that price prediction for you. Machine learning algorithm sets the XRP price for January 31st of 2023. Boom, there's the charts for you. They're saying January 31st of 2023, we are basically going to be sideways. I know this looks like it's down, but on the top here on the left, it's 34.3 cents and it's 33.9 cents right here. So what they're saying is maybe we're gonna be down maybe a percent or two in this month, all right? Now, the big dates that could affect these things have to do with CPI data, right? CPI data is coming out is coming out January 12th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We will be having a live stream covering that because if CPI data is bad, this whole price prediction algorithm just goes right out the window. What we're looking for right now is a delta minimum of 0.6 or more. Last CPI data came out at 7.1. We need at least a 6.5 score or less on this CPI data. We're gonna be following the market leading up to it when the announcement is made and the reaction afterwards. Now, that being said, Jerome Powell and the Fed are gonna come out and they're gonna be looking at this CPI data along with the base book. I did a video about it telling you all the big dates, but they're gonna go over those chunks of information January 31st with the announcement on February 1st of what they're gonna be raising rates. So that price prediction video is based upon the data going in line with the decline of the Delta expectation of 0.6. A Delta expectation of 0.6 though isn't much because when you think about it, inflation at 6.5 when we need it at that 2.0 level, we are way, way far off. So you can see we have more negative expectation to come unless CPI data comes in so juicy. If we get CPI data in at the low sixes or high fives, we're going to be so excited, but that's going to be hard to see because food is still on the rise, everyone. Yeah, food is still on the rise as well as a lot of other consumer-based things out there. And if you want to know the big dates that affect XRP this month, this is the video for you right here. As more news breaks, I'll be sure to share it with you. Hit the like button if you like what you saw. Comment down below. It helps the algos out if you feel free to do so. 
hit the subscribe button if this is worth your time. And until then, I'll catch you cool cats later.